Hi, welcome to our small table. Today we're making pork tenderloin with horseradish sauce. Here's our finished product. Let's see how we got here. Pork tenderloin at my market comes in one and a half pound packages. So I've cut that in half and soon the website linked in the video description will have a second recipe that will use the other half. I've already trimmed this pork so it's ready to go as the oven preheats. The other prep work that's already been done is that I've lined a roasting rack with a uh, roasting pan, pardon me, with foil. You don't strictly need the rack inside. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. Just line a roasting pan with foil. I just like to let the heat go all the way around the pork while it's cooking. Steak seasoning is in the herb section of your market. You'll have multiple options. Just take a look at the ingredient list and see which one you feel contains the ingredients that most appeal to you. We're adding rosemary and thyme. So obviously I will be singing Simon and Garfunkel for the rest of the day and that we don't have the parsley or sage. Get that mixed up. We're just going to rub it onto the pork. On both sides. Don't forget these end pieces here. Then we're going to use a sharp knife. I'm using a paring knife in this case because I'm the camera space is so small. My sharpest knife and my most comfortable knife is my 8 inch chef's knife, but it would be a little bit awkward to show on camera. I'm going to make 8 slits in the tenderloin and I'm going to do it at, in kind of random places. Four on each side. See if I can remember where those were. And insert a quarter of a clove of garlic into each one. Probably need to make those a little bit deeper. It's not getting in there. The garlic that was available in my market was huge. Which is nice. It's important to have your knives very sharp in the kitchen. It's actually the safest. If your knife is not sharp, then you give it a lot more pressure when you're cutting, which means that if the knife slips, and it is more likely to slip if you're giving it a lot of pressure, that it'll go down much harder into your finger or whatever is nearby. Whereas if your knife is very, very sharp, then it just flows through whatever you're cutting. And we'll do four more slits on this side. And insert the garlic. I think that one's a bit too big for that space. Just give it a good little push and it'll stay in. This 
has been a very busy cooking weekend, or last few days actually, in this house because I had a new toy. My sweetheart got me a pasta extruder to go with my KitchenAid. And so I've been extruding pasta to try it out. We'll go ahead and put the meat in the roasting pan. In the center so that the heat distributes evenly. And then we're going to use some balsamic vinegar and some olive oil and just drizzle over the top. I'm going to go ahead and move that around a little bit. Since so much of the balsamic was lost to the pan. My oven is already preheated, so this is going to be baked uncovered, 350 degrees, for 30 to 40 minutes or until meat thermometer it reads 160 degrees. With pork it's important your oven may heat differently than mine does. It's important to actually check the temperature for which you'll insert the thermometer at an angle at the thickest part of the meat. So I will be back to demonstrate the sauce for this. Here we are again, ready to make the horseradish sauce. I'm making this right after the pork has gone into the oven because it'll chill while the pork is cooking. I'm just going to add white ingredients to other white ingredients here. We've got mayonnaise, sour cream, and prepared horseradish sauce. Horseradish is a very strong flavor. If it's not really for you, then go a little bit lighter on it if you need to. We'll add in some grated lemon peel. which is making the kitchen smell marvelous. I will often make this go a little bit faster and use the other side. I will often use leftover lemon peel if I've just used lemon juice and I have the peel. I'll grate some zest and put it into a jar with some white sugar. Makes lemon sugar, which is wonderful if I'm making shortbreads or certain other light cookies or biscuits. It's just nice to have a little bit of extra lemon flavoring in it. I don't need a lot of lemon here, it's just an eighth of a teaspoon. And then a dash of salt and a dash of freshly ground pepper. Get that all nicely mixed together. And we will cover cover, pardon me, and chill until the pork is done baking and ready to serve. And when it comes out of the oven, I shall return. 
And here we have it. In my case today, it took 35 minutes to get to 160 degrees inside. And we've taken the horseradish sauce out and served it alongside. Thanks for joining me at our small table. The recipe used today is linked in the video description. Next time we're making a couple of fast desserts with tortillas and chocolate, which you probably have all the ingredients for already in your cupboards. See you then!